So first, uh, this work is a result of a multi-year collaboration with the Messaging Layer Security Working Group at the IETF. And uh, so what is Messaging Layer Security, or in short, MLS? So 15 years ago, end-to-end -end encryption was reserved to the elite that could afford its technical complexity. Nowadays, as we can see in the media, end-to-end -end encryption is becoming an essential feature of, uh, of um, modern messaging applications for everyone, whether to fight against targeted advertisement or to protect oneself uh, against its government. Um, what are the um, guarantees offered by uh, state-of-the-art secure messaging applications uh, th such as Signal. Um, so S Signal guarantee confidentiality, meaning that uh, only the people involved in the conversation uh, can uh, read its content. In particular, it means that uh, the conversation cannot be read by uh, the application servers, the internet provider, or uh, the government. Um, secure messaging uh, applications are cryptographic protocols that execute uh, for several years. Hence, we need to study uh, what happens when one of the devices becomes compromised. For example, if it is stolen or seized by the police. Uh, hence, resulti resulting in a leakage of uh, the private keys it stores. State-of-the-art secure messaging applications ensure uh, forward secrecy, meaning that uh, messages exchanged now are still secure even if a device is compromised in the future. And as they guarantee post-compromise security, meaning that if a compromise happens now, uh, messages exchanged after are still secure after some period of healing. An essential feature of messaging applications that many people use nowadays is the possibility to communicate in groups, and um, a group messaging security can rely on forward secrecy and post-compromise security. For example, a property we may want is that when Eve joins a group, uh, she isn't able to decrypt messages sent before, which looks a lot like forward secrecy. And a property we definitely want is that uh, when Eve leaves, she isn't able to decrypt messages sent uh, after she left, which looks a lot like post-compromise security. What is the state of the art of secure group messaging before MLS? The rough idea is that uh, the signal protocol uh, solves this problem between two, two devices, and so we can use pairwise signal channels to implement a group. Um, problem with this approach is that if you have n devices, you need roughly n squared signal channels, uh, which does not scale for large groups, such as enterprise or university. To solve this problem, the IETF created the MLS working group that recently published the MLS protocol, as known as uh, RFC 9420. MLS was designed with the following constraints. It must be secure, meaning with confidentiality and uh, uh, forward secrecy and post-compromise security. It must be efficient, meaning that it must scale to large groups. It must be asynchronous, meaning that devices are allowed to, be, to become offline during the lifetime of the group. And finally, it must support dynamic groups, meaning that uh, people can join and leave the groups over the lifetime of the group. Uh, because of all these design constraints, it is a complex problem to solve that requires novel cryptographic work. And it is very easy to get wrong. For example, last year, uh, so Matrix tried to solve this problem by using a modified version of uh, the signal protocol. And last year, security researchers found many embarrassing vulnerabilities in the design of uh, the protocol. Moreover, it's not straightforward at all. And there are many protocols that can do, solve this problem with different performance security trade-offs that were, were considered when uh, designing MLS. As a result, it is a complex uh, specification. It is very long and is a result of an organic evolution through uh, many commits and pull requests. 
uh, that either added a feature, improved uh, performance, or uh, fixed recently discovered attacks. And finally, even if um, the RFC is well written with a high level sandposting and uh, nice figures, it, is, it describes the protocol in a monolithic way, which makes it uh, tough to happen. So um, our contributions on MLS, in short, we took the MLS protocol, we showed how to split it into three easier to understand subprotocols, which we called tracing, tricamp, and tridem. We found various design flaws and uh, proposed fixes to the working group along with other design improvements that were accepted, and we proved the security of tracing in the Dolevio model. Um, to modularize MLS, we split it into so three subprotocols. Tracing deals with authenticated group synchronization, meaning that uh, it ensures group members agree on the internal cryptographic state. In particular, uh, group members agree on who is in the group. Tricam deals with efficient continuous group key establishment, meaning that it provides uh, continuously fresh group keys to group members uh, during the lifetime of the group with uh, forward secrecy and post-compromise security. And finally, 3 uh, deals with forward secure group messaging, meaning that it takes the key provided by 3 and allows members to uh, exchange messages uh, in a forward secure manner. When we tried to do this modularization, at first, it was not possible to do it with proper abstraction boundaries because, for example, uh, concepts of 3 were used inside tracing. To allow this uh, modularization, we proposed um, slight modifications of MLS to the working group that were accepted. And so now it is possible to modularize MLS uh, this way. <clears throat> Next, uh, we worked on a formal proof for tracing. To do that, our methodology is to um, take the MLS specification written in English and translate it into a precise specification in the FSTAR proof assistant. On this FSTAR specification, we can do proofs such as uh, functional correctness proofs, uh, for example, uh, proving invariants. And to prove uh, security, we need to decide on uh, which security model we rely and we chose the symbolic model and we can instantiate the FTAR specification with the DY star um, symbolic security framework to obtain a symbolic implementation on which we can do security proofs for tracing. Next, uh, with this specification, we can also instantiate it with the verified cryptographic library HackerStar and obtain a concrete implementation on which we can do interoperability tests and we are one of the four implementations to uh, inter interoperate, which is each other. And a key technical detail here is that we use the same specification to obtain, to both do security proofs and interoperability tests, which means that uh, uh, it raises the confidence that uh, we correctly translated MLS in FSTAR and that we don't prove security on a subtle variant of MLS. When we did the proofs, we found attacks and bugs. Uh, we proposed fixes to the working group that were accepted. And so as a result, we both have helped to improve MLS and uh, have proofs on this uh, improved MLS. So I will first talk about what we learned when doing functional correctness proofs, and then what we learned when doing security proofs. When joining a group, uh, the new member first checks that the group is well formed, for example, by checking the validity of uh, internal signatures. And if the group is malformed, it will refuse to join the group. A property we then want is that a well formed group can't be modified into a malformed group, or in other words, well formedness is an invariant under group modifications. It turns out that it was not true uh, because the well formedness checks. Uh, were not strong enough. We proposed a fix to the working group and it was accepted. 
uh, on security to think rely on the construction called parent hash. And the MLS specifications try to gi give intuition on the guarantees offered by parent hash. There are two problems. The first problem is that parent hash is described in a, an imprecise prose. And the second problem is that those guarantees were not met by parent hash. So our first contribution is to describe uh, those guarantees precisely in the symbolic model. And the second contribution is uh, to fix the parent hash constitution so that those guarantees uh, are true. So we proposed uh, fixes to the working group that were accepted. And as a final contribution, we found a signature ambiguity attack in MLS. So um, between tracing and freedom. Uh, both sub-protocols internally rely on um, uh, signature computation and verification. And because you can't sign high-level data, you must first convert it into a sequence of bytes by using a serialization function. The key things to, hear, to, to see here is that um, both sub-protocols use the same signature key, but use different high-level types. And what happens if there is a collision in the serialization in the two sub-protocols? Uh, then it means that even if uh, both sub-protocols uh, sign different uh, high-level types, their byte representation is the same. Then it results in, the, in a bad interaction between tracing and freedom because we can take a signature uh, computed in 3DEM and inject it inside tracing, probably resulting in a signature forgery. Uh, so we proposed the fix to the working group that was accepted. And as a final note, uh, we found this attack uh, by doing proofs on the bit precise specification because uh, doing slight simplification uh, might not have uh, exhibited uh, this attack. And uh, this was possible by doing uh, an executable specification and uh, doing interrupt tests. To conclude, uh, we helped to improve MLS uh, during its standardization. And now that it is published, uh, it will surely play a major role in the future of secure messaging. Do you have any questions? <laughs>